Apple has recently released the 2018 iPad Pro. In this video, we're not going to be talking about the iPad Pro. We're going to be talking about the iPad 1. I'm going to go ahead and hand this video over to my roommate who has owned this iPad 1 since 2010 when it was released. Getting this device in 2010, you are greeted with exterior package such as this. Uh, as you can see, it's got that nice vintage skeuomorphic early version of iOS on it. So let's open up this box here. It's our shiny reflective Apple sticker. And you're greeted by, like most Apple products, a large screen. Additionally, in the box, aside from the tablet itself, which for 2010 was pretty thin, but by uh, 2018 standards, I mean, this is an iPhone with a case. A little thicker. Also, an uh, interesting note, this is back when Apple actually still used to use plastic on the exterior of their products. As you can see, the volume rocker, power button, the uh, toggle switch, which you can either make a, a mute the device or lock the orientation, which is what I've opted for, are all in a black plastic. The other I.O. actually have a headphone jack, mono sound, which is definitely a downgrade from a modern Apple device, unless you're like me rocking the iPhone SE. 30 pin connector, also a far less use versatile port than the Lightning or the new iPad's uh, USB 3, but still gets the job done, still able to charge it. And home button. Well, aside from the device and the package, you also got your little pamphlet from Apple, start guide, right here, or your information guide, really. Cover card, which gives you some information about the tablet. And the famous Apple stickers. You actually got two with the original iPad, and they're considerably sized ones. So aside from the uh, literature and the box, you got the charging cable and wall adapter. So in terms of specs, this thing has the latest version of iOS that it can possibly run, and that is 5.1.1. It has an Apple A4 chip, 256 megabytes of RAM, or roughly a quarter of a gigabyte. The display on this is a 9.7 inch IPS touchscreen. It is 1024 by 768 in resolution. Most certainly not retina by any standard. The iPad 1 has a battery capacity of 25 watt hours and a claimed runtime of up to 10 hours. This device has a 30 pin Apple dock connector as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is one thing that this device has and the iPad Pro does not. All right, so you're probably wondering what you can do on an original iPad in 2018. Well, you can actually still use a lot of streaming services, so Hulu, Netflix, and Amazon Video all still work on this device, as well as YouTube to some extent. Now, the original app that came on this for YouTube does not work whatsoever. It will, well, it opens, but you cannot connect to YouTube. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, you can go onto the App Store and download YouTube, but that does not work either because it is not supported on this device. Now there is one way that YouTube does work. That is by going to Google Chrome and typing in youtube.com, which will automatically pull up the mobile website for YouTube. As you can see here, the scrolling through lists of videos is actually relatively responsive. We can go into a video, pop open here, and I believe this will actually work in full screen mode as well. As you can probably tell by this, you can hear the audio of the ad and it's not actually playing the ad. So this will not be the most enjoyable experience in the world, though it will work. So after some loading, the uh, YouTube video did open up here. This has defaulted to 360p and it appears to be working just fine, minus the fact that the ad didn't play. Uh, well, it didn't play properly, anyway. Now, the interface is most certainly not the fastest thing in the world. We're going to see if we can't turn up the quality a little bit. Now, I know this video on YouTube is a 1080p 60 video you saw there. Or my maximum is a 720p video. Now, that seems to have restarted the video for some reason, which is interesting. And it does say that we're playing in HD now. So as you can see here, YouTube does work on this. It's not the greatest experience in the world. Uh, a little bit laggy on the interface and whatnot, though the video seems to be playing pretty smooth. It says that it's HD, 
though it probably doesn't matter that much considering the fact that the screen on this is not exactly what you'd call high resolution. You can definitely see pixels on this if you get this anywhere near your face and it's nothing like the retina displays of today. And as I try to get out of full screen there, you just saw it crash. So most certainly not the most usable thing in the world, though it does technically work and it would probably work better if you just left it in 360p. I will note that you cannot sign into the Google suite of apps on this whatsoever. You can try to sign into Chrome. It will just create some kind of an error. Does not work. It will not work. Even though you can technically install Google Drive, it will not allow you to sign in. And you basically can't get past the sign in once you get in here. So I'm not even going to show that, but it does not work. Now there is one thing that does appear to be fully functional on here and that is the calendar. So as you can see here, this actually did sync with my roommate's account and he had a psychology exam today. So you can see that there. Now one thing that you may not have thought about with the original iPad is that it does technically have stylus support and you can use pretty much any cheap stylus you want to. So a lot of times you can get pins kind of like this for free. Sometimes they'll have branding on them and whatnot. But uh, anyway, they'll have a little stylus on one end or another. Now this does have a couple of advantage over the actual Apple Pencil. One being, well, you can use it as a real pin. And the other being, you never have to charge this. So we can open up the app called Paper here. And this is something that you can still download on the iOS app store i'm gonna go ahead and channel my inner artist which isn't a lot but i'm gonna go ahead and try to draw something at least so you can see there we can draw just basic figures so things like that this is surprisingly responsive compared to what i kind of expected you can probably see how this is following and you can see here, you actually can vary the thickness of the line, though it's not by pressure, it's by speed, which is probably gonna be a bit of a challenge if you're actually trying to draw something. But anyway, we have several different colors we can choose from. These are kind of dull, like pastel colors. I don't see a way that you can obviously change this so it's custom colors. So unfortunately, you're basically limited to uh, ink-like colors. So that just goes to show you that you can technically use a stylus with the iPad 1. Just as a quick little experiment here, let's see if we can't download Microsoft Office because the Google Drive sweep will not work on this. So we're going to go over to the App Store and look up... This is definitely not the most responsive thing in the world. All right, so Microsoft Word is not going to install on this. If anybody was curious if the Microsoft Office setup would work on this, it will not. Certain music streaming apps will still work on this device, though unfortunately not all of them. Spotify will allow you to sign in, but after you get past the sign in, it will not connect to Spotify's servers anymore, as you can probably see there. SoundCloud just likes to sit on this screen and never completely open, or if it does get past this screen, it crashes almost immediately. So that doesn't work too well. Pandora is one on this list that does work, so I can play. I'll see if I can't give you a little bit of a demonstration as to what the audio on this sounds like. Of course, it's coming through a microphone, so... It's not going to be the best representation, but we'll see what we can get. Alrighty, we'll turn that off before the copyright police get us. Music just appears to be sort of a default MP3 player, and that's not going to work too well for us, it doesn't appear, because there's no songs on here from what I can tell. So one thing that does still run on here that is uh, definitely not up to date but does technically work are the web browsers i've been trying to use some things in safari and chrome both of them seem to be about as stable as each other you can probably see by the error already that these do not work particularly well 
All right, to demonstrate this thing's use as a potential social media machine, we'll go ahead and try to load my uh, Twitter account here for this channel. I believe I've got the right link. Yep, that appears to be correct. As you can see here, you do have an interface that loads, and it is relatively responsive when it comes to scrolling around, but the pictures do not load automatically. It will give you an option that says view picture and you have to click on that in order to get the picture to load. So that's not that great. You'll notice it does say uh, new, download Twitter for iPad app. And that does not work. You need to have iOS 10.0 or higher in order for that app to work. And this thing has iOS 5 on it. So yeah, that's uh, not particularly useful. And to show another social media platform here, we'll just go to the White House uh, page on Facebook. Now, as you can see, this does load in and it kind of works a little slow. And if I continue to wait here and scroll around this, it will eventually crash. Or if I try to play, see the video that was up top here, if I try to play this, the browser will probably just end up crashing. Nope, oh, it actually is going to play it this time apparently. Last time I attempted this it crashed and was not too happy about it so that is working. I don't know if I have audio or not. I do have audio. So Facebook is at least somewhat serviceable though as I said this did crash the first couple of try times I tried it so uh, probably not going to be the most usable thing. Of course as you can see you know Facebook is going to be a lot of pictures and things yep there it just crashed so it does not like to load in all those pictures and videos most likely because this thing only has a quarter of a gig worth of ram so that eh, doesn't work the greatest so some of the harder websites to run are websites like cnn.com where basically the entire website is just filled with ads so i will demonstrate that cnn will not load pretty much all news websites are equally difficult and taxing on computer hardware, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, this will eventually end in the app crashing. All right, so how about websites that might be useful to a college kid? So this is the website that we use at my school to do online homework and whatnot. And as you can see, the iPad doesn't exactly render the website at all. The, icon the icons to the side are there. And that's about it. And as you can see here, this even pops up with an error message saying your browser does not meet the minimum requirements. So as you can tell, not going to be great for schoolwork either. The 2018 iPad Pro will probably make a good gaming device considering the fact that its GPU is about as powerful as the one in the Xbox One S. I'm going to go ahead and hand this video back to my roommate so he can show you what kind of games you can play on the iPad One. The original iPad is still able to game. However, not as well. There are some games that used to be on this years ago that still function, such as uh, Dead Ahead here. This game is still functional. Uh, this is the old version of the game. It's so you can still play some games on iOS on this. Uh, Sword and Sorcery is another one. Uh, game loads up. It has a version that's compatible with this rendition of iOS. Uh, one of the best critically acclaimed games on iOS. So if you get an original iPad for $20, you can play Sword and Sorcery. Some apps by companies such as Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon, apps that were made for kids do still function on this. So if you want to buy an original iPad for a small child, since it's kind of hard to break this thing, uh, there are still some compatible games from shows that they may watch and enjoy. So yeah, the uh, game still runs. However, not all games that are on the uh, App Store that will actually download and have an old enough version work with the original iPad due to its order of a gigabyte of RAM, which leaves it to uh, crash sometimes <laughs> uh, or every time it tries to open an app such as Smashy Road. There is one more thing that this device can do that is somewhat useful. So it does come with this neat photo mode if you want to uh, use it as a picture frame in your house. The original iPad did have a few accessories, a keyboard dock, which I didn't get, which isn't that useful anymore because unless you use uh, pages as your word processor. However, what I did get was the keyboard case or not keyboard case, portfolio case with the original 
iPad. Protects it pretty well. We'll give it to Apple. This case wasn't uh, too expensive, or at least especially relative to their current prices for accessories. And it's stayed together for for uh, eight years. Protected this device pretty well. And actually doesn't increase the profile of the uh, iPad too greatly. As you can see, one issue with it is though, is it does collect dust pretty substantially actually. You have white marks on the back of this uh, all of the time, but it actually gives you a few viewing positions if you're buying this tablet, consume media especially. It gives you uh, this position, which mainly would use if you're uh, watching something, having it sit seated on your lap or if you're reading something, or actually set on a table which is also especially useful if you use that uh, photo frame capability. If you want a device that can run Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Video, or Pandora, and probably a handful of other services as well, or if you want to have a nice digital picture frame, this might be a device for you. This thing has kind of a limited usability, as I showed. YouTube does still technically work on this, though it's not the greatest experience. And some social media sites will load on this as well. This could also be a decent device to give to a kid if you just wanted to let them play like Cartoon Network games or things along those lines. You can pick these things up on eBay for relatively cheap nowadays, and you might even be able to find somebody that would be willing to give you one for free because, of course, people that have these probably don't use them too much anymore. So if you wanted to pick one of these up, it wouldn't be too much of an investment. I think the number one reason somebody would buy an iPad 1 in 2018 is just to have an original iPad, which is kind of interesting and it's kind of cool to see how far that the technology has come, as well as what this technology can still do in 2018 after it's been released for eight years. Anyway, if you enjoyed that video, click on the like button. Didn't like the video, click the dislike button. If you're still using an iPad 1, or have somebody or know somebody that still uses one of these things, let me know in the comments because I'm really intrigued to figure out what people use these for, if anybody does use them anymore. And also, if you have an iPad 1, maybe do some experimentation with it and see what kind of apps that you can get to work and leave those in the comments as well because I'd be curious to try them on this thing. So, anyway, that's about it for now, guys. Bye.